Hello, you guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Gosh, it's been, actually, it hasn't been that long since I've posted my last video. But today, I wanted to talk about dating. I feel like a lot of my videos seem to be surrounding that topic. But the reason I wanted to bring this up, I wanted to talk about the type of men that you will encounter as a transgender woman or as a woman of trans experience. Like, when I started my journey, when I started my transition, one of my biggest fear was that, one of my biggest fears was that I wasn't ever going to find someone that was going to love me or accept me or be able to get past the fact that I'm in fact transgender. And I always thought that that would be a big stumbling block between me and my potential partner. Now, I will admit that, yes, there have been some guys who haven't been able to look past this fact. But I've learned over time that, honey, if you're a woman of trans experience, there is a whole world out there waiting for you. There are guys who literally will fly down from Europe just to be with you. Look, I've, you know, I've, I've had experiences where, you know, I had a guy from Australia fly down to be with me, a guy from Italy, a guy from England. Um, you know, I've had, I've had people make dramatic, romantic gestures. And that's not to, to make it seem like I'm like the baddest bitch on the planet, but rather it's to impress upon you the idea that you being trans is considered phenomenal and amazing by some people. There are literally men out there in the world who see you as this beautiful unicorn and who want to celebrate you. So I don't want you to ever feel down about the fact that Friki, who lives down the road, doesn't want to finesse. You know what I mean? Because there are guys out there. There's so many guys. Let's talk about them. Now, not all of, them, not all of these guys are good for you. <laughs> Some of them are problematic. But let's just go through the list of the men that you will encounter. Number one, most Dating in the trans scene is going to happen online. You're going to meet guys on Bumble, on Tinder. Uh, there's actually a site that I use. I'll put the link in the description. It's called Lady Boy Date, and I hate that name, but all of I've met all of my exes on that website. You know what I mean? So most of us are going to meet the guys that we want to be with online. Now, the primary reason for this is if you live in South Africa or you live in um, a predominantly black space, a lot of times the guys in your area may have, you know, conservative views or fucked up views, to be honest, about the trans community and maybe less likely to actively pursue you if they know you're a teen. Because look, in black spaces, there's a lot of judgment. Look, nobody comes after us faster than our own people. Our own people literally have created this environment or this atmosphere where guys that are into you, that are interested in you, are a little bit scared to approach you because they're afraid of the backlash they're gonna get. So most of the guys that we meet are guys we meet online. So the first type of guy that you're going to meet, I feel like every trans girl meets this guy, is the chaser. Now I've made lots of videos about chasers and I plan to make a lot more. When I talk about a tranny chaser, although I, I do think that the term tranny chaser is just thrown out at any guy who's interested in transgender women. When I talk about tranny chasers, I'm basically talking about guys who 
they just fetishize you. They just fetishize you. They just want you for sex. And they literally look at trans women like Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. They literally just want to like get every single trans girl that they possibly can. And no shade, no hate to a lot of these uh, tranny chasers. But girl, if you are versatile or you're a top, and um, a tranny chaser finds this out. They literally, all they, all they want from you is for you to fuck them. And they low-key kind of view you as though you're men. They see you as though you're men or they see you as though you're some like porn star. And the tranny chasers that I've talked to, none of them have ever really tried to get to know me. They've just wanted straight straight to the point, I want to have sex, when am I coming over, when am I going to sleep with you, how are we going to have sex, what time are we going to have sex, that seems to be the whole conversation, and they try to force it into the conversation in different ways, they'll start asking about being dominated, or if you want to be dominated, and it's just a whole mess, so I personally try to avoid chasers, that being said, I'm not, I'm really not an angel. And I've talked to a couple of cute ass chasers and I've been like, you know what I mean? But at the same time, by and large, a lot of chasers just are, are really problematic. A lot of them are really problematic. If you do ever get into a situation with a chaser, girl, just take your power back. Like, view it as a hookup. View it as a hookup. Don't try to make it to be something that it's not. You know what I mean? So, number two is the first timer or the heteroflexible. Now, I use the term heteroflexible because a lot of... Okay, actually, no. It's, those are two distinct types of men. First timer is normally a straight guy who's never been with a trans girl before and it doesn't really bother him that you are trans. He's just trying to get to know you. He saw you, he saw a beautiful woman and what you got going down there doesn't really bother him. In fact, it kind of intrigues him a little bit. Um, first timers are notorious for being problematic as well because <laughs> a lot of them have never really interacted or engaged with uh, women of trans experience. So they'll ask you dumbass questions. And it usually doesn't come from a bad place. Uh, from tranny chasers, it does. But from first timers, a lot of the time, it just doesn't. They're just trying to figure it out. And the weird thing is, common sense would tell you that Okay, if you're trying to find this out, why don't you just Google it? Why don't you do research? Why would you, like, evoke some type of dysphoria within me? So you get the first, you get the tranny chasers and you get the first timers. Um, my experience with first timers has always been super, super nice. A lot of them are really sweet. Uh, just problematic with some of their questions. The third type is heteroflexible. Heteroflexible, and what I mean by heteroflexible, guys that are heteroflexible are super different from bisexual guys. For heteroflexible guys, it doesn't really matter a lot of the time. It doesn't really matter a lot of the time. They are intrigued by different things. So you could argue that they are, in fact, just bisexual guys. So you're going to meet a lot of heteroflexible and bisexual guys. And it's weird with them because when I first started my transition, it was so uncomfortable being with a bisexual guy or like a heteroflexible guy because it made me question myself because you think to yourself like, what is it about me that you like? And it's weird that you're into guys and it invalidates me in some type of way because it kind of made me feel like he viewed me as though I were a guy. Like I know a lot of trans girls 
who stay clear from bisexual men for this very reason. They don't want to feel invalidated. They don't want to feel like the guy's looking at them and trying to get with the person that they used to be, not the woman that they are today. So my only, my only warning with bisexual guys and heteroflexible guys is they are known to be a little bit promiscuous. Number two, when you date or you hook up with heteroflexible guys, they're normally, they normally hook up with gay guys too. And you could, you could get some hate from the gay community. Like hooking up with a guy who's bisexual or heteroflexible can be wonderful. It can be amazing to have somebody who accepts you. But at the same time, hooking up with a bisexual guy or a heteroflexible guy can be extremely problematic and extremely messy because you get into fights with the gays, you get pulled into that whole messy scene. I'm not here for that. I personally would prefer not to go down that road. Then you meet <laughs> you meet the DL men, down low men who who are like the heteroflexible guy's evil twin brother. They basically want to sleep with a transgender girl and they want to sleep with gay guys, but they're very secretive about it. I would stay clear from DL men. There are a lot of DL men in the black community, in communities of color, where hypermasculinity is almost endorsed. So you'll meet these guys that are like thugs and like hard and they treat you like shit. DL men are normally the ones who come after you. They're normally the ones who are going to be in your comment section. They're the ones who are gonna be rude to you, who are going to swear at you and make fun of you. And then slide into your DMs and be like, hey, what's up? Or what does that trans do? You know what I mean? Um, and they're the ones who end up killing us. Girl. They literally will think nothing of ending your life. DL men are the biggest problem in the trans community. A lot of people think it's the chasers. The chasers are normally just these horny, horny white men who are like running around like panting dogs. Chasers are harmless for the most part. The DL men are the ones that are going to kill you because somebody who feels that it needs to be a secret what he's doing with you will stop at nothing to keep it a secret. DL men, you're going to bump into them in the hood. You're definitely going to bump into them in the hood. They're the ones who are going to be keying. They're the ones who are going to be laughing at you. They're the ones who are going to be doing the most. So... I try to stay clear of DL men altogether. Then you get the most annoying, most annoying um, type of guy is the one who thinks he's doing you a favor. The one who knows your secret. Girl, I have a whole YouTube channel in my Instagram and says that I'm transgender. What secret are you talking about? They come up to you, and I've had it so many times where um, I'm out dancing, living my best life, and dude comes up, and he claps me, and he'll whisper in my ear, oh, I know you're trans. It's okay with me. Now, what they're saying is that um, it's okay for you to hit on them. Nine times out of ten, these dudes don't even look good. I've had so many, so many of these guys come up to me and they expect me to approach them, they expect me to hit on them, they expect me to, you know, to try and finesse with them because they're fragile male ego, even though they find you attractive and they don't have an issue with you being trans. Their fragile male ego is such that 
they feel that they can never actively go out into the LGBT community and hit on someone. That person needs to come to them because in their mind, it somehow makes it better. Boy, please, I'm just kind of like, every time somebody says that to me, it always insult, like I always feel insulted because I feel like I don't have any problem finding dates. I don't have any problem meeting men. So whether you know or you don't know doesn't mean a damn thing to me. So those guys I've encountered within communities of color. I hate to say it, these are hood guys. So then um, you get... You get, you get the cute white boy online. You get the, the cute straight white boy online. There isn't really a term for these guys because I've only met them online. Actually, I would call them trans amorous. Trans amorous. So trans attracted men. Trans attracted men, a lot of times, the ones I've encountered that are open about it, that try to get to know you, that don't fetishize you. You mainly meet them online. You mainly meet them online. And guess what? The conversation with them is normal. You start talking to them. They ask you like about your job. Like They ask you about your family. Uh, you start talking about movies. They try to make jokes. They send you memes. Like my first... Um, <sighs> One of my boyfriends, the first guy that I dated from the online English site, Michael, online on the dating site, the one that I met on the dating site, um, he was from England, and we spoke for about four months, and in the four months, we never had a conversation about sex. He was just trying to get... Uh, to South Africa, he really wanted to come and meet me. And even though the relationship between me and him didn't work out, he was a real dude. He was like somebody serious that I could like legit get to know. And it was the same with Marcelo from Italy. Marcelo never at any point tried to sexualize me in the, in the initial conversation. And Jimmy didn't try to sexualize me as well. You know, nine times out of ten, I was the thirsty one. Four months into the relationship, being like, hey. You know what I mean? So um, these guys, you know, in my experience, I've met them online. Um, so I, I, I've been on this dating site called Lady Boy Date. And the frustrating thing with that dating site is you get a lot of chasers. You get a lot of chasers and you get a lot of porn addicts. And you're, a lot of them are going to be trying to hit you up. And you get a lot of old men. There are some old men on these sides. But, you know, if you swift through all of these disgusting men, you're going to find yourself a gem. You're going to find yourself a gem. And you know what? You deserve to have that gem. Don't ever worry about meeting people, girl. Do not ever worry. There is a world of men that will move heaven and earth just to be with you. Look, I'm not an arrogant person and I don't like to stunt and I don't like to friend, but I've had guys offer me visas. If I wanted to go live in Canada, it would have been dead, dead happen. Like it would have happened. If I wanted to go to London, it would have happened. If I wanted to go to Israel, it would have happened. But I play it safe. And I encourage you to play it safe. My main rule is, if you meet these guys, they need to come to you. They need to come to your city. And they can. A real guy will. He needs to fly down. I don't care if he's in Greece, if he's in um, Los Angeles, if he's in Australia. If he wants you, he's going to book himself off. He's going to come on holiday. He's going to come to your city. He's going to book a hotel and he's going to spend the time and make the effort to be with you. I would never, and I've been offered to go to different countries. I would never just get up on a plane and go visit these guys. 
anything can happen, a.k.a. human trafficking. I'm not trying to die. I have a whole family waiting for me. So just realize you're beautiful and you deserve to be loved. And honey, you're going to get loved. Thank you for watching this video. And I wish you only the best in your journey, finding love. I know it's going to happen for you, girl. Bye.